My name's Linda. I work on behalf of the National Apprenticeship Service on a project that works across all schools and colleges within the UK. I work across those in West Yorkshire. This short presentation is aimed at uh, the parents of students who are looking at apprenticeships so that you can support your son or daughter to access an apprenticeship. So I think the thing to remember when we're looking at apprenticeships is that there isn't one deadline. Jobs come on, apprenticeships come onto the job market and go off right throughout the year. So students really do need to start sort of looking from September and making sure that they're on the alert from there. The main time companies generally do recruit tends to be sort of like January through till March, April but some do recruit earlier. Apprenticeships are advertised in different places. This isn't like applying to UCAS or applying to university. There are lots of job sites, lots of apprenticeship sites um, where you can sign up and manage your alerts. And I'll go through some of these as I go through this presentation. Entry requirements vary. Um, again, it's not like university. Different employers require different skills and different entry requirements. So, for example, a level two apprenticeship may well require GCSEs, maths and English at grade four or above. But a degree apprenticeship in engineering may well require A levels or BTECs in particular things. They do vary tremendously depending on what, what the job is. And similarly, the application process will vary. So some of the larger companies have very um, process fuel um, assessments, interviews, and can take quite a long time to get through that. Where other smaller companies, it may just be a very informal interview. Uh, they do vary. So getting started. The starting point for anybody is what, what are they interested in? What do, would they like to apply for? So what sort of job? If they're unsure, work experience can be really helpful. Now that isn't necessarily that easy in the current job climate, um, but even work shadowing for a few hours um, could be a benefit if they're not too sure what they want to do. Or if you have contacts within the local um, job market then or the local you know, the, you, your locality then could your son or daughter go and have a chat with someone so they know uh, a little bit more about that industry if that's what they're interested in encourage your son and daughter to look at a range of things rather than just be totally focused on a one company or one particular type of job and um, the more flexible they are the, the, the more likely they are to be successful and certainly not to just rely on one particular company um, because if that company chooses not to recruit or has a recruitment campaign where they get inundated um, then that can mean disappointment so try and get them to be a little bit flexible yes have a plan a but maybe a plan b c as well This is really important, this going the extra mile, ensuring that they've given themselves that sort of competitive edge when it's when they're applying for jobs in what is um, a difficult job market and a competitive job market, then really they do need to be um, well, well prepared. So some commercial awareness. Have they worked out what that industry does? Have they worked out what that company does? Um, are they looking at company websites, uh, social media? What about the competency framework? What is that company saying about itself? Does it have a mission statement? Um, those kinds of things. So again, really scrutinising company websites to find out more about um, not just the company overall, but also some of its ethics and some of its um, statements out there. What's the qualification like within an apprenticeship? Um, the apprenticeship standard 
um, is available for anybody on www.instituteforapprenticeships.org forward slash apprenticeship dash standards. So those qualifications are there. They're about two or three sides of A4. Worth checking out. What about open days, careers events? Go along to these, um, even the virtual ones that are there at the moment. Quite a lot of employers who do offer apprenticeships are, sh are being showcased at these events and some companies are having virtual open days, even if they can't have actual ones at the moment. Stay connected, sign up to receive alerts. So the minutes you, you start looking at something, whether it's a company website, whether it's a more generic job website, stay connected um, make sure you are receiving alerts so that they don't miss out on things. If it's possible, try and get to speak to an apprentice to find out a little bit about what it's like. Now that could be done through one of the training providers out there or if they know someone that's an apprentice, um, fine. If not, um, then there are quite a lot of videos on one of our websites called Amazing Apprenticeships, where they can really find out what it's like to be uh, an apprentice. Uh, apprentices talking about their, their roles. They need to research the recruitment process as well, where that's possible. So find out how that company recruits. Does it have assessment days? Does it have interviews? Does it put people through psychometric tests? There can be quite a few things to look at. This is one we get asked an awful lot. How can I tell if it's, if it's a good apprenticeship? Um, well, the answer to that is going to be quite personal to each young person and, and to and the employer as well. But we do have a few hints and tips. What's the pay like? Um, what sort of wages is it like? And what is the progression like? What are what are the hours and the progression within that company? So even if the pay starts off low, then they may well get promoted. And as they get more experience, get more pay. How often do they have pay reviews within that? Is it a, a, a permanent or a, a fixed term um, appointment? If it's a fixed term appointment, a temporary one for the duration of the apprenticeship, what's the likelihood of that being permanent? And what are the, the opportunities from there? Which training provider are they using? Every apprenticeship has a training provider, the organisation that provides the qualification. Now you can look up that training provider on Ofsted. They all get assessed as schools and colleges do. So you can check out the Ofsted rating of the training provider. You can also check out the website of the training provider as well and look for any sort of apprenticeship success stories on there. What's the job actually like? Has it got some variability to it? Has it got um, progression and opportunity within it um, to develop? And those sorts of questions will give you an indication of um, what, what sort of apprenticeship it is. Is it uh, a good apprenticeship? Is it a fair wage? Right, getting ready to do an apprenticeship. How can you support your son and daughter? Certainly at the application stage, writing application forms can be quite daunting for young people. So having someone that will proofread it for spelling, for grammar, for the content, have they filled every section in, have they assessed, have they actually addressed the, um, the criteria for the job and evidence themselves. All applications need to be the best they can be because that is the first point where anyone is deselected. So a slapdash application is not really worth doing. It has to be as good as it, it can be and you, that needs stressing. Young people do need support. Anybody looking for work needs support staying on top of applications and deadlines and where they're at with the process. Ideally, they will have applied for more than one. So keeping tabs on 
who was getting in touch about which particular opportunity when when the interviews crop up is important. So even logging things in a diary or an electronic diary can be useful. If at all possible, interview practice, either through the school or the college is ideal to do because that way the student can get um, examples of the skills that they need for the job and sort of evidence and talk things through about uh, the evidence that they will need and the likelihood of some of these questions cropping up. Also preparing for the questions that um, you get at the end of an interview when someone says, is there anything you'd like to ask us? Um, it's always good to have a couple of questions there. But that interviewer may have already addressed those questions, but it does show interest. And one good one for that is, how did you get started in that job? Encourage your student the right attitude. A lot of employers feed back to us that good manners, having the right attitude, being smart, polite, on time, well prepared, thanking the employer those are really really important things so there's an almost like an etiquette of applying for jobs how do they apply number one they would get themselves an account on the find an apprenticeship and from there they can download an app which will alert them as jobs crop up There are resources that help you as well as a parent uh, on the website called Amazing Apprenticeships. You can get a monthly parents pack, which you can um, download from there. There are also resources translated into several languages to help people from the whole of the community. Where else might they look? They might look on a company website. If they want to work for West Yorkshire Police, they would look at West Yorkshire Police's website, if they wanted to work for the NHS, they could look at NHS jobs. So company websites, really useful. Social media, very useful as well, because most companies have got a social media platform. A particularly good one is LinkedIn, which is almost like Facebook for jobs and Facebook for companies. So if you've not actually looked at it yourself, then it's worth having a look at and making, uh, persuading your son or daughter to get an account on there. Any contacts that you've got within the community who may be in a position to recruit, do have a chat with them as well. On our website, Amazing Apprenticeships, there is a section, a section called Vacancy Snapshot, and that is a useful tool for students to have a look at to check out some of the jobs on there and some of the companies who are likely to recruit. Now, in West Yorkshire, we do offer a little bit of additional support and um, one way that students can find out more about apprenticeships is to apply directly to the training provider. Um, there is a directory on www.wilp.org.uk um, where you can have a look at um, the, the local training providers and get in touch directly with them through their emails or websites. Every district in West Yorkshire has got a careers company and there you can get support from those as well as the National Career Service. The local authorities have employment hubs and it's worth checking out the local authority websites as well. I've mentioned some of the social media and other websites uh, and LinkedIn. Um, Future Goals is a website which has quite a lot of labour market information on it and just tell you sort of like the areas where there are likely to be growth in employment in the future. So that is us, that's the National Apprenticeship Service um, supporting young people and parents and I hope you found this uh, brief um, presentation useful and it will help you support your son or daughter to get into an apprenticeship.